Right, so that is the news out there from Port of Spain, Trinidad. The game has been culminating to a draw, unfortunately, because the rain has, of course, swept aside day five. My name's Avni Chagdi, and you're watching the Calypso Cricket Confrontation. Yes, guys, we don't have a stat start as such, but we'll pull out some numbers from day four and we'll have to highlight it because we, of course, forgot to mention it in the previous show that Ashwin and Jadeja, 500 wickets for them, bowling together, brilliant stuff, another record and another feather in their hat, brilliant. And let's just start with, of course, what's going on and what's to appreciate about this test match. For me, absolutely nothing, Akshay. Uh, I don't know about Gurkirat and Nick's. And we're all like pretty much in blue and maroon. Let's start with the man in maroon in terms of the turban color, at least. <laughs> Come on, Gurkirat. What is it with test match viewing? Because I know you're going to be doing a Gurkirat deep point show, which says what really kills test cricket. What has killed this test, my friend? Yeah, like I was saying it the day before, it's, you know, I think pitches play a huge role regardless of what cricket you play. Because uh, to See, as a viewer, what you want to see is a contest which is basically a contest where both the batters and the bowlers have a chance. And you, you can see it across formats that if you have pitches which are only favoring one one skill or if are if they're not not suiting anyone, then it becomes a pretty monotonous watch. You know, we, we've seen even with the you know, uh, an example of this is when the matches were happening during the PSL in Rawalpindi. For, at first, you know, watching a 250 versus 240 game looks good. But when it becomes a norm that you're only going to watch 240, the sentiment comes out is that you might as well replace bowlers with bowling machines, right? Because there's nothing for bowlers. And surfaces like the ones that we saw here in Port of Spain are, you know, where there's absolutely no help for anyone. Because uh, the pitches are slow, stroke making is difficult. West Indies did well to bat the number of overs that they did in the first innings. Indian bowlers also did well to ensure that West Indies didn't get past 300. So, but it just took so much time out of the game. And, you know, uh, in, in today's time, people have a very short attention span. So, if they have to wait 10 sessions or, you know, 8 or 9 sessions to, to wait for action to happen, it's it's not going to glue the viewers to, the, to, to their screens. They are going to look forward to something else. And, you know, you could say that Test Cricket is the most prestigious format, but prestige is not going to bring entertainment. And if something is not going to bring entertainment, it is not going to get crowds. So it is as simple as that. You need better pitches, regardless of what format you play in, to make cricket much more watchable. And I think the single aspect in that is pitches need to have pace. I agree of, uh, with that completely. In fact, let's move on to the first segment, which is the Experts Corner, which will talk about this game in particular and much more. Right, I saw Nick smiling away, who I'll come to in due course. But Akshay, I'll come to you first. I'm just trying to think and play devil's advocate, right? India got a lead of 183. I know Jaiswal and Roth were brilliant and they got that 100 on stand in quick time. But in hindsight, it's always easy to say, should they have declared faster? Any hope of a result? Come on, man. These are precious WTC points. I'll quote what's written on Somesh's shirt. Uh, shirt control the controllables. This is beyond anyone's uh, control. So they can't really predict when it's going to rain. They can't plan for rain. So I, yeah, in hindsight, maybe, yeah, but even then, I, I wouldn't sort of, uh, you know, hold the gun against them for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's all they right. But only 24 hours. Exactly. I know, I know. But it just makes me think, Nix, with regards to India and how they bat in the first innings. I realize that a lot of people needed some runs under their belt. But... With series like these, where you know it's an inevitable result unless rain comes in, shouldn't they be more proactive at the bat? Surely they could have scored at a quicker pace. Or am I being too harsh, You are. Nickel? How much more proactive do you want them to be? Sorry, 438 Nickel. came at a slow pace. They, you really think on day one, they it's, be thinking it's slow of rain on day five? It to they the should pace with these things in. Nah, at nah. which England and Australia were batting. But India's run rate was 3.4. And see, I India had that. a mini... And, and India had a mini collapse in between. So... And yeah, I mean, if, if India would have looked to bat faster, or maybe if West Indies would have looked to bat faster, both the teams could have, you know, lost their wickets much more earlier. So that's that 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 would have been the uh, 
the other side of things. So, and I'm not sure that you know batting quickly on this pitch was was easy as well. I mean, after the after the first hour uh, on day one uh, post the lunch session, I think the pitch had lost all sort of pace. The first session it did have some pace, which is why you see, saw the ball carrying through. You you had even Shannon Shannon Gabriel coming in and you know bowling at 145 plus. He got a jinkar Rahane with that one delivery bowled at 148. But post that the pitch has just lost all pace, and then it becomes difficult to force the issue. Outfields were also slower, so I, I won't really blame the players there much. So I understand run making was tough, but Nick's come in here. Is there any way India could have taken the initiative faster and preempted the rain on day four, day five? No, no. I think the moral of the story so far is our patience is waning. Please make test entertaining. So, uh, this was the norm for a long time. I think we are just getting habituated with uh, a lot of balls flying around, be it in England or in Sri Lanka. But, uh, I mean, it's too far-fetched to think that on day one, you're going to think about what is likely to happen on day five. Because if they end up with that mindset and they get bowled out for 250, all of us would be screaming our lungs out that uh, why is the need to take such risks. So, I think there has to be a fine balance. I think India tried the best. You can say they were 3 point four is not bad. They played one of the best possible innings any side has ever had. Like over 150 runs batting at that rate. So, kudos to the management. I think they tried their best. Rest, as uh, Chris said, you can't control the rate. So, yeah, they controlled the controllables very well. And for me, there were quite a few very good moments to remember. The Craig Brathwaite dismissal, uh, proper pitch of a delivery for Ashwin to get that the Siraj wicket, the 5 of for Siraj, the wicket of Joshua De Silva. So, Jaiswal hitting that 6 to Roach. So, there is everything that you can take out. But yeah, I think I called 1 0 at the start of the series due to rain. So, yeah, happy to have proven that right as well. Okay, fair enough. India won the series 1 0. And hopefully, when they are kind of in the race for the maze for the WTC 3.0 in a couple of years' times, I hope this draw doesn't bite them in the back, sir, Akshay. It wouldn't, right? No, it shouldn't. Sorry, I mean, sorry. It, 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 can't, it wasn't that they messed up. So, yeah. it cannot come back. Conditions can't come back to bite you. Huh. Had they collapsed, had they not, like you can say, the draw at Kanpur, maybe that is a kind of result that you may say that, okay, it can come back to haunt you. But not getting the best of conditions, then we are being fierce mobile. <laughs> okay. I just want to ask you that. Or you could just say tears, Morgan. It's one <laughs> and the same thing. I think, I think Anirudh used that uh, yesterday in the Ashes show. You guys should check that out. But Gukhia, just to finish Experts Corner with you, your man of the match, I, I don't know who it is. I think we can second guess right now. But who did you really like and who really put the I mean, stamp of authority, if you like, in this game? See, it's, it's, it's between Siraj and Kohli. But I, I, Siraj I think Siraj... Siraj. Uh, sorry, Siraj. Which, which franchise did they play for in the IPL? Sorry. No one cares. Hey, Madhulo, the morning of Tuesday. It's, it's the one that, that promises to win every year but doesn't. <laughs> if you wanted to hear that. But yeah, I, I, I think going with Siraj is the better call because uh, taking wickets on this pitch was more difficult than scoring runs. Yeah. Next, you agree? You echo those thoughts? Siraj for you, man of the match? Yeah, yeah. I mean, proud to say my answer is the same. Nothing different. You have to use it once. <laughs> And what about you? Yeah, I completely agree. Not just the choice, even the reason. This was a surface by taking wickets was a lot more difficult than scoring runs. So, yeah, Siraj is definitely my pick. Okay, super. Let's move on to the next segment of this show, which is called What's Trending India? Right, what's Trending India? Today, we're asking a very left-field question because not a not lot has gone on in day five, let me put it that way. But it begs the question of about test cricket, right, in general. So, I want to ask these boys completely random if there are two innovative ideas to propel test cricket in the current generation, what can be much more applicable from an ICC sense to attract crowds. Gurkirath, of course, was harping up pitches. There's day-night cricket. We've seen that come to limelight. People are randomly saying on Twitter, Twitter, like having some amazing different umpires who are attractive in nature. I don't want to quote the exact thing they said. But look, feel free to speak your mind, guys. Akshay, I'll start with you, then Nix and Gukirat. What can make Test Match Cricket better? 
I feel more onus should be uh, more responsibilities should be given to umpires right now when rain falls there's a lot of rigidity like every half an hour you know they do their inspection and then there's a 15 minute break and all of that there should be flexibility in that if the rain stops and if the pitch seems good to go they start play immediately as well as a light exactly so umpires who whoever is available on ground whoever is the umpire standing umpires fourth umpire third umpire all of them they can take a call and start play immediately right now there's there's a lot of it feels like you know a a, a government entity right now the way it functions are wait karo are ye dekhenge pehle wo dekhenge acha abhi pitch sab acha hai to 15 minute aur wait karenge and then it it might again start raining if it starts raining and if it's a light result they don't go in so all these things i feel yeah if if they can be more proactive on that front and ease the restrictions a bit yeah i feel that would be a good change to begin yeah with. that's food for thought next what about a couple of things i might just suggest because we spoke to some people in bangalore and asking them generally and a couple of guys in the street told me why don't you have unlimited bouncers i know that might sound really fanatic and frenzy but it makes for thinking the other person said why don't you introduce the second new ball in the 50th over rather than the 80th over so these are a couple of factors but what do you think do you have any innovations you'd like to see in test cricket so uh, i feel there are a few controllables that can definitely be uh, controlled and that is usage of the ball as you said uh, you have to see the kind of the the, the duke's ball that we saw in this test they were changed at the drop of hat that is a controllable you can control uh, a good proper cricket ball that can last long you've seen the issues with sg ball that when it gets softer it's almost not doing anything so when you're wanting pitches to be sporting if the ball also stays in good shape for a longer period of time you will have various facets of play come into the game you don't w- want to see okay lusty outfields will nullify over reverse swing but you can always get them elsewhere so i think the nature of the ball uh, and it includes spin ball that if you feel that conditions are better that you may lose light in some parts of the world then play with the pink ball for the entirety of the test there is nobody stopping you from doing that it will get the get the crowds in as well so have test centers build a culture make it a hype people should be waiting for a diwali test or a pongal test or a test of something that sort so unless you build that culture on test cricket it is hard for people to look forward to that okay now let me ask you this if you the icc right now just imagine this right and you are tasked with giving a facelift and a plastic surgery if you like to test cricket how will you go about it you can you can have some vague ideas but talk to me i believe somewhere down the line uh, what icc needs to do is is uh, try and uh, give more games to associates and uh, let them also like they used to have the intercontinental cup the last time it was held was in 2017 it used to be a four day uh, tournament between associate cricket teams and it actually helped them improve mohammad shahzad uh, you know came into the news after scoring a double hundred in one of those inter- intercontinental cups and now that isn't happening so what that would do is that it will allow uh, the associate nations to try and you know, to to improve as well or else what what would happen eventually is that you will have you know far too much of gulf between top 3 4 teams and the remaining teams and then what will always happen is that there will be a bigger gulf of quality and the gulf of quality is easier to cover up in smaller formats as as opposed to in a in, in a five day game so i feel somewhere they also need to work on on this system maybe you could have an have a tier system or you could just try and make sure that you know uh, the game is being developed the first class game is being developed in in other countries i i feel overall there's a huge potential to develop the game in africa which i don't think is being happening right now yeah i think those are good points to consider because there's such an influx in t20 as well lots of domestic competitions have kind of been on the back burner and that's not right if you want to keep tests alive and then it just instigates another conversation about the big 3 and how the financial model is what it does for west indies cricket who's been part of cricket test folklore all of that right yeah a, a slightly left field choice when you mention t20s like do you see a franchise league of some sort mushrooming in the in the test format is ideally i'd want to like, but in the test it, it's just like because we're cricket romantics when 90s kids you mean next gurkit we all grown up watching lots of tests in odis <laughs> we'll be agreement of that fact but yeah. lots of people in the comments i'm guess i don't want to call out to chant or any of these boys uh vasat narayan but these guys have grown up in that t20 culture right Fair. where they're just like uh let's do something better with test cricket but look that's a good chat and that makes up for a good take away let's finish up this uh, calypso cricket conversation <laughs> with a show or a segment gurkirat loves the most which is who am i
Right, who am I is of course a quiz where we of course ask you guys some simple clues about a player who's played for either India or West Indies for you guys to win some merchandise back home. Now this is the part of the segment where Gurkiyat normally disappears but he's sticking with us today. So lucky us on yeah, a Monday. Man. Let's see if Gurkirat Nix and Akshay can get this first person. And here's your clue Gurkirat. I made my ODI debut against the West Indies in 1992. I have 11 one-day international half centuries against West Indies, but not a single century. And I've played with two IPL teams. So two IPL teams. I made my debut in 1992. And I can go on giving you other clues because he's a famous person. Do you want to add on to the clues? Is it Saurav Gangli? Oh, you brilliant, brilliant boy. That's a good shout. I won't confirm, but with my claps, you guys should know. Let's move on to the second one. I made my ODI debut against India. I have a test average of 63 against India and I played just one IPL season. Who am I talking about? And this is a West Indian cricketer. So feel free to let us know in the comments below. Close, but no cigar, as usual. Um, but I can give you a clue Wait. that this man has an Indian name. That's all I'm going to say. Let's move on to the third clue then in terms of the third person because this is definitely an Indian test cricketer who made his test debut against the West Indies. Now, he was the youngest wicketkeeper to make a century in a test match and his nickname is Bunty. <laughs> That's the most random That's Bunty gone, hai, bhai. <laughs> Bunty Who's Bunty? You guys can keep guessing. Your guess is as good as mine. And it is for the viewers to, of course, win some merchandise, which was around here. Oh, but we took that away from the studio. But look, there's plenty of t-shirts to be won. Nain Mungia. Sorry? Nain Mungia. Not Nain Mungia. Not Sava Karim. Not MSK Prasad. So keep thinking. Indian wicketkeepers who made their debut against the West Indies and whose nickname is Bunty. Not Bubbly. But Bunty. And thanks so much for watching on this Tuesday morning. India, of course, getting the Series 1, another Series 1 against the West Indies and getting those important points in the first test. It wasn't to be in the second test, but we'll, of course, cover all the cricket that they play in the due course. That's all we have. I'm Avni Shagli. It's time to wrap proceedings. And it's a goodbye. Bye right now. <laughs>